start in the back of the room, fourth row. Yeah. Me? Yes, Tim Reynolds, excuse me. I didn't have my hand up. Spoke, can you take us into the fourth quarter huddle? And I know that's being in that spot is a place where you guys have gotten obviously very comfortable this year, but the mindset, knowing the stakes of the next 12 minutes, what, what was said in that, in that huddle? I don't totally remember. Um, I, I think we were like talking about, uh, you know, some schematics. Uh, it was more about that. This is, this is complex. Um, you know, basically every other huddle we're talking about, you know, what it's going to require and all, all those extra efforts and uh, physical plays without fouling, um, just making winning plays. Uh, but I think at that time we were talking about. Uh, some s schematics. Um, this is a really good, you know, offensive team. Uh, th they force you to have to to compete at a super high level, but you have to do it with a brain and you have to do it uh, with discipline. Um, and our guys, uh, you know, regardless of how the head coach feels like during the fourth quarter, our guys love to compete. They love to put themselves out there uh, in those moments of truth. Um, and uh, fortunately, we were able to make a, a lot of big uh, defensive plays you know, down the stretch. And then we got a lot of contributions, uh, uh, which you're going to need against a team like this. Um, you know, that, that some of that run happened with JB on the bench. Their run in the second quarter happened with Jokic on the bench. Um, but Duncan's minutes were, were really good. Uh, you know, Kyle uh, just has this, this veteran championship experience that just kind of settles everybody and he just makes the uh, big appropriate plays or big plays at the appropriate times uh, and then bam um, you know we just can't say enough of how difficult his responsibilities are in this series um, to pick take arguably the toughest cover in the league for all the myriad of reasons that I don't need to get into. Um, and then he has to shoulder a big offensive role for us as well. So it's not like he can just stand and rest on, on the offensive side. And yes, he has to play uh, 40 plus minutes as well. We're going to stay on the right side, fourth row. Anthony Chang, Miami Herald. You guys have had a bunch of really, really impressive sh shot making games this postseason. But tonight, what did you feel like you guys did better as far as the offensive process, especially in that fourth quarter? Um, more intentional, uh, and that doesn't guarantee you anything either. Uh, but at least you give yourself the best chance that the ball's going where it needs to go. Everybody understands what we're trying to get accomplished, uh, and then you have to trust. You have to trust each other. Uh, so we did get some relief points on cuts and extra passes, uh, ball movement that led to open shots, and then, yes, it, it always looks better if the ball goes in. Uh, but our guys are competitors. They, they love those kind of uh, moments. We're going to go to the left side, fifth row. Bo oh, Nick Friedel, ESPN. I know mental toughness has been a bedrock of the organization for a few decades, but why do you think this team has shown to be so resilient over and over? Uh, well, we've talked about it in all the previous three series, uh, Nick. Uh, you know, so I feel like I'm being redundant, but we, we've faced a lot of adversity during the season, and we handled it the right way where you're not making excuses uh, about it, the injuries, the changing lineups. Uh, uh, and because of all that adversity and the 57 close games that happened uh, you know, due to a lot of that, uh, that it hardened us. Uh, it steeled us. Um, and we developed some grit, uh, which is what we all want, right? <laughs> uh, we want to be able to have uh, that uh, privilege of having adversity. You know, um, and being able to overcome it, you, you gain strength from that. Um, but this this is a very tough uh, opponent. Um, they have our full respect for sure. We're going to stick to the left side, second row. Uh, Coach, Ryan McFadden from the Denver Post. Uh, in game one, you mentioned uh, Max Struss is, is ignitable despite the uh, poor shooting effort he had in game one. Just how pleased were you the way he got going early in the first quarter to kind of set the tone for you guys? Yeah, of course, like everybody's going to be looking at that final number. How many threes did he hit? You know, but he, he, he's a winning basketball player. You know, he, he does uh, winning things defensively. 
Uh, he's physical. He's in the right spots. He's a great blockout guy. He's also uh, a guy that'll come in and help rebound. Um, if you give him a task, he'll do it. <laughs> you know, and that that's winning basketball. Uh, offensively, yeah, it's always great to see the ball go in, but Max has also proven that he can impact winning, you know, regardless of, of whether the ball's going in. Uh, he puts in more time than he probably should, you know. Uh, and he's a masochist like all of us, and uh, yeah, he's always going to put in the time. He's ignitable, um, and we needed every bit of what he did tonight. Right side, first row. Coach Ronendo from Israel today. Before the series, we spoke to Caleb Martin. We're speaking about you and Coach Riley. He said you're at your best after defeat. Can you run us through like your playbook in in, in those I don't situations? Know. I, I, I don't. I don't even know how to answer that. Uh, it's not about me. You know, this group we've we faced tough tough times this year, and so we've we've learned how to handle. Um, you know, setbacks, things not going our way, and then just getting to work instead of getting distracted or making excuses or feeling sorry for ourselves. So it, it's like a muscle, you know, that you work on and you get better. Uh, so we've had probably, <laughs> well, we have. We've had more experience at, at this than anybody else in the league. We've had uh, a lot of crushing losses, um, you know, during the regular season. We're going to go to the back room, left side, Mark Spears. Coach uh, Mark Spears, ESPN Zanscape. Uh, just talk about uh, Gabe Vincent, uh, his output tonight, and uh, also just how incredible his story has been. Yeah, we love Namdi. We really do. If you if you don't know that the 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 you know the national media, because you're not following us, please look that up. Namdi, uh, he's a special guy. He really is. He was with us in the bubble as a two-way guy. And he took on the toughest, I think the toughest role change um, for a young player. Um, he was a gunslinger, two guard. We wanted to develop him into a combo guard, somebody that could uh, organize us, uh, be an irritant defensively, tough, uh, but learn how to facilitate and run a team. I, I think that's the toughest thing to do in this league is, is turn a two into a one. Uh, and he, he openly just embrace that and then he struggled you know at times with that because you're trying to reinvent yourself uh, and instead of saying this is too tough let me be me he's really grown um, the last three years um, he's just an, uh, uh, an incredible winning player and this year you know he's he's been a starter for us he's been great he's been off the bench uh, he's been great um, and I think he's like a lot of our guys, uh, the competitive spirit, you know, and, and you get challenged like we're getting challenged in this series. You know, you hope that it brings out the best in you, and that's what it's, it's doing with him. Okay. First row, left side. Hey, Coach. I'm Melissa Rowland, Fox Sports. Just as a follow to that, what do you think has basically spurred his growth? Uh, um, are you talking about Namdi, uh, Gabe? Uh, I, I would say... You know, that, that old saying that we use a, a lot, uh, people uh, severely overestimate what you can get accomplished in a day, uh, and they grossly underestimate what you can get accomplished in a matter of months, years, when nobody's paying attention. Uh, and he's the epitome of that. Okay. On the right side, fourth row. Um, what, when, what about this matchup led to you making the starting lineup change, and what did you like about the way they set the tone there in, in both halves, really? Yeah, I wouldn't say that it was a, a, a lineup change. You know, I, I get what you, you're saying. We, we just went back to our, our original lineup. We, we went with this lineup for, for 14 games. I didn't have the foresight. I didn't. That's on me. You know, we had to make an adjustment in that Boston series, uh, and that really was necessary, and it worked. And then we're play, facing a new opponent that we don't really know, and so we just went with what finished that previous series. Um, but we've been 10 and four, you know, 11 and four now with the, with this lineup. Um, and cl clearly, we needed that uh, size and, and veteran experience and physicality that that Caleb uh, brings. I don't know what how many minutes I and on my glasses, so I don't I don't know the stats, but uh, that veteran experience, the decorated 
championship level experience that uh, Kay Love and, and Kyle both brought tonight. Um, there's not an analytic that can that can show you how valuable that was. Okay. Final question on the left. Hey, Coach. Ramona Shelburne, ESPN. Uh, this is probably oversimplifying things, but sometimes when, when teams play against Jokic, you, you turn him into a scorer, you turn him into a passer, and he controls the game. You, he only had four assists tonight. Yeah, that, that's, that's ridiculous. You know, it's just that's the untrained eye that, that says something like that. This guy's an incredible player. You know, twice in two seasons, he's been the best player on this planet. You can't just say, oh, make him a score. <laughs> That's not how they play. They, they have so many different actions that just get you compromised. Uh, we have to focus on what we do. Um, you know, we try to do things the hard way, um, and he requires you to do many things the hard way. Uh, and we, he has our full respect. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Coach.